<laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to English with Max. In this video, we're going to look at clothing vocabulary. We'll look at some very common, easy words, but we'll also look at some more advanced words like hem and seam. I'll also point out the differences between British English and American English. Most of these things are actually the same in British and American English, but there are some differences. It can get a bit confusing at times, but I'll do my best to make it clear. An American friend did help me with this video, so don't worry, I've done my research. In Australia, we actually use a combination of British and American vocabulary. I don't want to confuse you, so I won't talk about Australian English too much. But if you're living in Australia, don't worry, because Australians generally understand both British and American words, so it usually doesn't really matter what you use. I'm not going to talk about underwear in this video because I already made an entire video on that. If you'd like to watch that video, you can click on the card above or the link in the description. If you'd like to learn more advanced vocabulary, you can sign up for my free fortnightly email lessons. You'll find the link for that in the description. If you'd like to improve your grammar and just generally stop making so many mistakes in English, remember that I also have a course on Udemy which covers 55 common mistakes made by English learners. To receive my special discount for that, you'll also find the link in the description. Okay, so clothes. Whenever I have to pack to go somewhere, in other words, if I have to pack a bag or a suitcase, in order not to forget anything, I always think about what I need starting from the bottom. So I start with shoes, and then go to socks, and then I work my way up. It's a trick I learnt from my mother. Another tip I got from her was to always bring a spare pair of underpants. She's a wise woman. Anyway, that's what we're going to do today. We'll start with the feet, and then move up to the head. Okay, so shoes. There are lots of different types of shoes. If you go shopping for shoes, you might see the word footwear. Footwear is basically anything that you put on your feet, mainly socks and shoes. Let's start with these ones. There are several different words for these types of shoes. In the US, they're usually called sneakers or sneakers. In the UK, they're usually called trainers. Some other words you might hear for these are tennis shoes, running shoes, or runners. In Australia, we often call them joggers. Now, these shoes have laces. Technically, this is one lace. It's one piece. But because there are two ends here, people would often say laces, even if it's on one shoe. Any shoe that has laces is called a lace-up shoe. So this and this, for example. If you look down and you see that someone's laces are like this, so not tied together, you could either say your laces are undone, which is more common in British English, or your laces are untied. Now let's look at boots. There are several different types of boots. For example, some are very sturdy and practical, like these ones, and some are a little prettier. I mainly wore these in Europe when it was snowing or very cold. I'm Australian, and because I don't see snow very often, I used to get very excited when it snowed. But I quickly learned that it wasn't always wonderful when it snowed in the city, because 
snow eventually melts and then it turns into slush. These were good for slush. Boots like these, which come up to the ankle or just above the ankle, are called ankle boots. Ankle boots. Tall boots, like these, are called knee-high boots. Knee-high boots. If they're very tall boots and they come up past your knee, they're called thigh-high boots. Thigh-high boots. Boots that people commonly work in and provide a lot of protection for the feet are usually called work boots. Work boots. And boots that people go hiking in are called hiking boots. Hiking boots. Oh, and those are cowboy boots. Cowboy boots. Okay, now this part of the shoe here is called the heel. Heel. This part of the shoe, so the bottom part that doesn't include the heel, is called the sole. Normally when we talk about the sole of a shoe, we don't include the heel. Some people do, but normally it's just this part here. This shoe has a couple of buckles on it. One buckle, two buckles. These particular buckles are just decorative. They don't actually do very much. But sometimes you need buckles to keep the shoes on your feet. For example, on these shoes. Uh, this is a buckle. It's a small buckle, but it's still a buckle and it's necessary to keep this shoe on the foot. Is that clear? <laughs> These are high-heeled shoes. You can also call them high-heel shoes, high heels, or simply heels. So you could say, for example, she was wearing heels. I know some people would argue with me and say that these aren't really high heels because they're not that high, but they're the highest that I have. Um, I think high heels can look very nice, but for me, comfort is more important. Now the heels on high heeled shoes can be very thick, like these ones, or they can be very thin. Very thin heels are called stilettos. Stiletto is the type of heel, but we also just call shoes with stiletto heels stilettos. So you could say, she was wearing stilettos. These are called ballet flats. These are also ballet flats. I think these are awesome. Uh, as you can see, they're not actually ballet shoes. They're not for dancing, but they look a bit like ballet shoes. On these shoes, you can also see some sequins. These little things here, those are sequins. You might have noticed that in these ballet flats, I have these things. This is called an arch support. I wear these because I don't like shoes that are too flat. By the way, the general term for women's shoes that are flat on the bottom, in other words, shoes that don't have a high heel, is flats. These are flats. These are sandals. These are my sandals, and these are my dad's sandals. There are lots of different types of sandals, but essentially they're shoes that leave quite a lot of the foot exposed and that have straps. Um, yeah, these are straps. One type of sandal is flip-flops. In Australia, we actually call these thongs, which Britons and Americans find hilarious because a thong is also a type of underwear. But yes, most people, most native English speakers in the world call these flip-flops. Now, shoes that you might wear around the house when it's a bit cold, like these, are called slippers. Slippers. 
Now shoes like this or like this or like this that don't have a buckle or laces or a zip are called slip-ons because you can just slip your foot into them easily. For all these shoes I've been using the plural because normally shoes come in pairs. But if you just want to talk about one shoe, you drop the S. For example, this is a flip-flop. This is a ballet flat. And this is a boot. If we talk about two shoes that go together, then we often say a pair of. For example, this is a pair of boots. So I could say, I'm holding boots, I'm holding some boots, or I'm holding a pair of boots. Okay, and now we have socks. One sock, two socks. This is a pair of socks. And Americans often spell the plural like this. These socks are called ankle socks because they're quite short. Socks that go up to the knee are called knee-high socks. And now we have pantyhose. Pantyhose is the American term. In British English, these are usually called tights. If you want to be specific in British English, you could call these sheer tights. Sheer means that you can see through them a bit, so they're not opaque. Um, but in American English, you would call these tights because these are thicker. So in American English, these are pantyhose, these are tights, and in British English, both of these are tights. Some people use the word stockings for pantyhose or tights, but technically stockings are things like this that don't come up to the waist. They stop at the thigh. Uh, so these technically wouldn't be stockings because they come up to the waist. And these lovely things here are called fishnet stockings or fishnet tights. You can also just call them fishnets. These are also called different things in British and American English. In American English, these are usually called pants. In British English, they're usually called trousers. Trousers. You do need to be a little bit careful in the UK because pants in the UK actually means underpants. More formal trousers or pants are called slacks. For example, you could call these a pair of slacks. A very popular type of trousers or pants are jeans. These are jeans. The material that jeans are made of is called denim. This is denim. Now these things here are not tights. These are leggings. Leggings. If you want something that's sort of halfway between leggings and jeans, you can wear jeggings. Yes, that's right. These are called jeggings. It's a portmanteau with jeans and leggings. Um, basically, they look more or less like jeans, but they feel more like leggings. And here we have some shorts. You might have noticed that most things with two legs are plural. You could also say a pair of. For example, this is a pair of shorts. And here we have a skirt. Skirts come in all different lengths. For example, some almost touch the ground, some go to the knees, and some are quite short, like this. If they're very short, then we would call them a mini skirt. 
a mini skirt. This is a denim mini skirt because it is made of denim. This is a dress. If a dress is very long and it's something that's worn on formal occasions, you can also call it a gown. For example, this is a gown. In American English, these are called overalls. Overalls. In British English, they're called dungarees. Dungarees. Let's now talk about tops. Technically, a top is any item of clothing that's worn on the upper part of the body. But in practice, normally we use it to talk about women's clothing, and it's often used for things that are a bit difficult to define. For example, I would call this a top because it's not a t-shirt and it's not a blouse. Let's first look at the word shirt. In the US, shirt is quite a general term for clothes that are worn on the upper part of the body. In the UK, normally if people hear the word shirt, they think of something like this or like this. So a shirt in British English is usually something with a collar and buttons. In the US, these things could be called dress shirts. In the UK, a dress shirt is usually a white formal shirt that men wear at night with a black tie. In the US, you could also call this a button-down or a button-down shirt. In the UK, a button-down actually has buttons on the collar. This here is a flannel shirt because this material is called flannel. This here is a blouse. A blouse is normally a loose top that a woman wears, and normally it's a little bit nice. It might be something that you'd wear to an office, for example. Uh, you could also call this a blouse. This one does not have any sleeves, so if you want to be specific, you could call this a sleeveless blouse. And I'm sure you know this word. This is a t-shirt. T-shirt. And now I want to talk about the term tank top. In the US, this is a tank top. It doesn't have any sleeves, it's quite tight, and it's also quite casual. Um, yeah, this has some cat hair on it. It's also a bit creased, but uh, that doesn't really matter because it's stretchy. In the UK, this is a tank top. No, this isn't mine, this is my dad's. We usually call a top like this with very thin straps a camisole. Camisole. Sometimes we call thin straps like this spaghetti straps. Spaghetti straps. In the US, this type of top is called a tube top. Tube top. In the UK, it's called a boob tube. Boob tube. In the US, this type of top is called a turtleneck. A turtleneck. In the UK, it's called a polo neck. Polo neck. In case you can't see exactly what it is, uh, it's got a long collar that you can roll down like that. In American English, this here is called a sweater. Yes, this is my dad's sweater. In British English, it's called a jumper. A jumper. If you have a jumper or a sweater that has a hood, then it's called a hoodie. This is a hoodie. But this part here is called a hood. This here is a cardigan. 
A cardigan usually has buttons down the middle and it's usually made of knitted fabric, so something like this. Something that's usually a bit thicker and warmer than a cardigan and isn't too long is called a jacket. This is a jacket. Jackets usually have a zip or buttons down the middle. And now we have a coat. A coat is very similar to a jacket. It's basically just longer. This is a winter coat. I wore this during my last few winters in Europe. Uh, it's never cold enough to wear this where I live in Australia. And here we have a suit. Both men and women wear suits. A suit normally consists of a jacket and a pair of trousers. When a woman wears a suit and it has pants or trousers, then it's called a pants suit. If it has a skirt, then it's called a skirt suit. In American English, this here is called a vest. A vest. But in British English, it's called a waistcoat. A waistcoat. And now we're going to look at sportswear. Sportswear are clothes that are designed for sport and exercise. That there in the US is usually called a sweatsuit or just sweats. In the UK it's usually called a tracksuit. The bottom part in the US are called sweatpants or sweats. In the UK they're called tracksuit bottoms or joggers. In the US the top part of a tracksuit is called a hoodie if it has a hood, or a sweatshirt. In the UK, it's called a hoodie if it has a hood, or a tracksuit top. And now it's time to look at swimwear. There are some specific terms for men and women's swimwear, but there are also a few general words, so words that cover both men and women's swimwear. Uh, one word is swimsuit. This is pretty universal. I believe it's used in every English-speaking country. In the US, a common word is bathing suit. Bathing suit. In the UK, a common word is swimming costume. Swimming costume. And in Australia, we often say swimmers. Swimmers. Let's first look at women's swimsuits. This here is called a one-piece. A one-piece. This here can be called a two-piece, but normally we call this a bikini. Bikini. And now let's look at men's swimsuits. Something like this was originally called a swim brief, but nowadays Basically, everybody calls these speedos, and that's both in British and American English. It's written with a capital S because speedo is a brand. It's actually an Australian brand. These here are called swim trunks in American English and swimming trunks in British English. Now we're going to look at sleepwear. These here are pyjamas. It's the same word in British and American English, it's just the spelling that changes. They are also often called PJs. PJs. Um, these here are pyjama bottoms. I know they're creased, but I do not iron my pyjamas. Um, you would call this a pyjama top. These are summer pyjamas. Winter pyjamas <laughs> look something like this. I don't actually have um, a winter pyjama top, but normally winter pyjama tops have long sleeves. Um, but yeah, <laughs> these are pyjama pants that you might wear in winter, or pyjama bottoms. 
And this lovely thing here is called a bathrobe in American English, and it's called a dressing gown in British English. I think it's very sexy. This is another item of sleepwear. In American English, it's called a nightgown. In British English, it's a nightdress. And some people call it a nighty. A thing like this that you put over your clothes if you're going to cook or maybe paint is called an apron. This is an apron. These dots on here are called polka dots. Polka dots. This also has polka dots. They're just smaller polka dots. And how could we talk about clothes without talking about some accessories? This here is a scarf. But scarves can also be quite thick, like this, and they can also be very thin, like this. All of these are scarves. This here is a tie. A tie. One special type of tie is a bow tie. This here is a belt. And these are gloves. One glove, two gloves. Again, you can say a pair of gloves. And now we're going to look at hats. There are lots of different types of hats, so we'll just look at a few of them. This is a baseball cap, or you could just call it a cap, but if you want to be specific, you could say a baseball cap, because cap is quite a general word. Uh, this is a straw hat. The part that goes around a hat like this is called the brim brim. Here we have a beret. Beret. Yes, the T is silent. This is a French word. Now this isn't really a hat, um, but you wear it on your head. This is a swimming cap. So this is something that you wear on your head if you go swimming at a pool. To finish off, we're going to look at parts of clothes. I've mentioned some of these words already. These here are buttons. This thing here is called a zipper in American English, and in British English it's called a zip. Zipper, zip. If you have a zipper here, at the front, it's called a fly in American English. And in British English, they use the plural form for one of these, and they say flies. So in American English, someone would say, your fly is undone, it's like this. And in British English, someone would say, your flies are undone. Now the fly or flies can be made of buttons, but nowadays normally it's a zip. Uh, here we have a pocket. It's a pocket. These are belt loops. One belt loop, two belt loops. And this part around the top here is called the waistband. Waistband. Uh, we have a couple more pockets. At the bottom of the jeans here, we have a hem. A hem is where the material at the end is turned over and then stitched down. This here is also a hem. Going down the edge here, we have a seam. A seam. A seam is where two or more bits of fabric are stitched together. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned the word collar. This is a collar. And these are sleeves. 
one sleeve, two sleeves. At the end of some sleeves, there is a cuff. A cuff is um, an extra bit that's stitched on to a sleeve. That's it everybody, I hope you found this helpful. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to write them in the comment section down below. See you next time. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. These are sandals. They look a bit about blah 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 blah. That don't have um, J blah blah blah. A sweater. That that shit. In the U.S. There it it's.